Major Slack Attack. Hey, welcome back to Major Slack Attack. Your first stop for insane Starfield gameplay on the menu today is another, the, the latest addition to Slack Squadron of Outrageous Starships. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. First of all, I'm going to explain why I want to make this ship. We are here at the Bezel 3B Outpost. This is my XP money farm. If you're not following this walkthrough, please see part 9 of this walkthrough. Part 9 of this walkthrough. I'll show you how to set up an infinite XP slash money farm using aluminum, iron, cobalt, and nickel to create adaptive frames and iso-centered magnets. Just a quick demonstration of that. Let's go to my hab and we'll go inside and crank out a batch. Bear with me, this is the benefit of those who are not following the walkthrough. Here's the industrial workbench. And since we have tons of iron, aluminum, cobalt, and nickel, we can crank out tons of adaptive frames and iso centered magnets. The only problem is I've just created like 200 of these. Earn 200 XP, but I'm already grossly overloaded. Okay, grossly overloaded. That is a problem. Um, now we can't fast travel, so um, we have to walk to our ship. For example, you're carrying too much, can't fast travel. And then, um, you all know the deal. You crank out tons of this. You're carrying around like 10, 15, 20,000 kilos of adaptive frames and isocentered magnets. You take three steps. All your oxygen is blown away. The screen turns red. You start losing health. And you're wandering around in low health, carrying around tons of stuff. And when you get to market, um, you can sell off some of it. But then you have to wait in place because... Once again, you're still grossly overloaded. You can't go anywhere else. You can't go to another vendor because you can't fast travel to your ship or just, just take off or just fast travel somewhere. And it's that's basically the bottleneck is being, being grossly overloaded. You could just send it to your ship. Okay, just go to your ship using your menu, press cargo hold, and then just access your inventory, go down to resources, and press store all resources. And that would send that all to your ship. Now you're no longer grossly overloaded, but you're limited by the cargo capacity of your ship. All right, so that's one issue. Let me just go outside and get um, some aluminum and iron, I believe. Okay, now, um, if, you also, if you've been following this walkthrough, you know I also created an amp farm on Jemison, Alpha Centauri. That amp farm was just for my own personal use. It wasn't an amp farm to, um, as an XP money farm. I just wanted to have a lot of amp because I like running around everywhere really fast. That's the only reason I did that. If I wanted to turn it into a mega XP money farm, that would be ideal because AMP weighs very little. So let me just quickly set up a pharmaceutical lab here. See, it only weighs 0.10 of a kilo, so I could crank out... There we go, 94, 93 of these. It only increases my carry weight by 9 kilos. And it sells for more money, too. The only problem is... I'd have to work on this ant farm. If I wanted to turn it into a mega manufacturing XP money farm, I'd have to set up, say, maybe 25 containers for argon, 25 containers for metabolic agent, and 25 containers for toxin. So that's like 75 containers I have to set up. And you know how it is with containers. It's incredibly fiddly. And a couple, a couple of days ago, I started working on this. Like, I was going to go, okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to grin and bear it, start doing it. And as I was doing it, I was thinking, 
why not just create a ship, a fast travel cargo ship that complements the Bezel 3B outpost? Because I already got an outpost that creates a lot of resources. It's just a matter of being grossly overloaded. And I was thinking it would be a lot easier to make a ship like that than it would be to set up the Amp Mega XP Money Farm. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to create a ship strictly for cargo and strictly for fast travel. It's not going to have any weapons, it's not going to have a shield, it's not going to be like anywhere near a combat ready ship. It's just a ship to carry tons of cargo from Bezel 3B to market. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. Create a fast travel cargo ship. I know it's ridiculous, but it's actually going to be a huge quality of life improvement. Alright, so I've used uh, several different ships to... You know, I've experimented with several different ships to do this. And I found the best one was... Um, first of all, the only bottleneck in this plan is a good grab drive. Everything else we could simply buy or use the parts on the ship that you're using. And I found the best ship for this was the Crimson Fleet White 2. I forget where I got this. Somebody wanted to post a comment um, telling me exactly where I got this. I'll give you honorable mention. I told you, I think we got it somewhere in the um, the Free Rangers quest line when we're getting going after the Star Eagle. I think that is maybe where I got it. Anyways, this is the ship I'm going to use. Um, this is pretty user unfriendly. And it's got a fantastic grab drive on it. There's a grab drive. And it's got 27 grab, grab drum thrust. That's key. And it's got some other good parts on it. So that's what I'm going to use. Your mileage may vary, but the, the concept is the same. I could explain to you the concept of how to create one of these ships right now. So first of all, let's make it our home ship. Okay, Crimson Fleet White 2, make it the home ship. Quick tour, really crappy ship. Although, I'm not dissing the Bethesda developers, because as far as this ship's purpose, which was to confound you as you were boarding it, it's an excellent ship. Absolutely excellent. But as far as being user friendly for you, it's a terrible ship. For example, let's say you came on the ship like I just did. To get to the cockpit, well you could go directly to the cockpit from the uh, the hatch, but let's say you want to wander through the ship. So you gotta climb a ladder here, get off, go to the back here, climb another ladder, and then whoops, no, another ladder and that's how you finally get to the cockpit. So like I said, totally user unfriendly. But like I said, for the purpose of what Bezel or whether um, rather Bethesda created it for, they created it to confound you as you're boarding it. Where's the docker? Um, this ship is so confusing. There's the docker. So when you board it, right, as soon as you board it, you're here. Long corridor this way, long corridor this way, long corridor this way. It's perfect to confound you as you're trying to take it over, right? That's a, that's a dead end, this is a dead end. And this finally leads you around, you gotta loop around, find the, the double ladder to take you up, right? So that's why we're gonna use this ship. Let me just see, how do I get out of here? <laughs> uh, here. Absolutely, totally user unfriendly. Okay, so we're at our landing pad with Shipbuilder. This has an important part here. Okay, and I 
it's asked me to make it to my home ship again. Okay, let's make it. Let's make it my home ship, and um, let's start building. We just want one part here. We're gonna do the rest of the build at uh, New Homestead. Just want to replace the landing bay right here. This landing bay loads from the back. We don't want that. We want a landing bay that loads from the top. All right. So what I want to do is go up here. We're going to freeload in a bay. And what I mean by freeload is not like use an attach point on the ship to load in something because that sometimes prevents you from having access to certain parts. This is what I call freeloading. <laughs> freeloading. It's like, yeah, I just go up like five or six levels and then, then load in a part because then you can see all the parts that are available. Let's load the hope for landing bay. As you can see, it has access from the top. So you come in, you take the ladder, you take the ladder, and you go up one level, and that's where you. In. It also has attach points on either side. That's important. Okay, so let's just grab this, slide it over, and I'll show you an easy way to um, replace the landing bay on a ship that you have. Just take the landing bay, take it down to level minus one, leave it right there, turn the ship like up like that, delete your current landing bay, and just slide this one over like that. Who loves you? Slack loves us. That's right. And don't you forget, it's an easy way to replace the landing bay on the ship. And that's all we're going to do here. Out we go. And now we're going to go to New Homestead on Titan in the Sol system. Okay, Sol system is just south of Bezel 3B. Sol, and it's a moon of Saturn. So Saturn and Titan. using a new ship so they want to scan us you're entering United Colony space maintain course and prepare to be scanned scan complete you're cleared to land at New Homestead all right Now, New Homestead, the ship services technician there has some specific landing gear that I want. Welcome to New Homestead. Thank you. Stay safe. And All right, enjoy. I will. Okay. Ship services technician is right here. You should inspect your ship. Sure. How about? There's our ship. Ship builder. All right. Now we have a hope for landing bay. Let's just double click on the cockpit here and delete the entire ship. And start building it up, starting with the bay that we already bought, which should be there. There's a hope for a landing bay. Next, let's see, use some other original parts. Whatever ship you're using is basically the same concept. You want to build a ship just barely enough to pass the flight check and then add a whole bunch of cargo. And try to use as many original parts on your ship as you can to do that. Okay, so start with the hope for a landing bay, and we want to use this is an original part because it's got a plus sign beside it. The Nova Galactic All-in-One Berth and the 2x1B, this is the best one because that's the bed closest to the ladder. The Nova Galactic All-in-One Berth 2x1B. If that's not one of the original parts on your ship, I would get that anyways because it's worth it. Okay, and just slide that forward and now we want to check out cockpits. We're going to freeload in a cockpit, make sure that we have access to all the cockpits available. Because once again, if you use an attach point, the game's only going to give you access to parts that can go on that attach point. That name may not be all the parts available to you. So that's why I always freeload a part. So let's go over to cockpits and there's all the parts available. This is the original part cockpit on my ship. This is what you're always going to do as you're doing this. Okay, you're always going to look for the original part. This costs 5612 credits and check out the cheapest of those parts. So the cheapest cockpit is 3900 and the original is 5600. So obviously we're going to go to the cheapest. That's how you choose between the two, all right? Okay, slap that on. So there's your cockpit um hab and landing bay. That satisfies uh one of the essential parts or one of the essential structures of a ship, a landing bay that leads into a hab that leads into the cockpit, all right? Next, um, it needs a fuel tank and a docker. 
This is the original docker. It's only 125 credits, so let's just use that. Your mileage may vary. Find out what the original docker is. It may be a, a docker that loads on top. You don't have to deal with that. And the original fuel tank. There it is. You can always tell it's the the original parts because again, like I said, it's got a plus sign beside it. That's not the original. That's the original fuel tank. Okay, I had more than one fuel tank, but this is the one I want. Hmm, interesting. This one's cheaper. So it had two of these. Okay, let's go with the cheaper one. Did not know that, okay. There we go. Okay, save money already. Next, it needs a reactor and a grad drive. Okay, once again, preload in. Let's start with the grad drive. Look for the plus sign. Always comparing. There's the original grad drive, and now compare it with the cheapest grad drive. Cheapest grab drive 6150, original grab drive. You want a good grab drive though. You're gonna need a good grab drive for this heavy loaded cargo ship. I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, just like that. And now the reactor. There's our original, nope. There's the original reactor. Okay, I don't want to move it down one. Just like that. That's good. Now we can flight check. We only need two more things. Engines and landing gear. So, let's slap a couple of bracers around this here. Structural Nova Bracer. The all-purpose Nova Bracer. And duplicate that one there and duplicate that again and one up uh, there we go okay now we can slap three engines here use the original engines trying to cut costs as much as possible look for the plus sign there we go and let's just duplicate that duplicate that there we go flight check all we need is landing gear now the landing gear this is why we came here to new homestead because they or one of the few places, I don't know if there's other, there could be others, that have this right here. The NG20. Is that the one? Yep, that's the one. Looks like it was the original part of the ship. However, whenever you try to load this on um, at the Bezel 3B Outpost shipbuilder, it's not available. I don't know why that is. Anyways, as you can see, it has four lander thrust it's one of the few landing gears that has four lander thrust this has two this has one this has two so load one of those and another one on the other side duplicate that there we go play check and there we go that's it the ship is legal it has no errors it has warnings but no errors okay it has no weapons no shield but it can fly you can exit now but don't don't exit now we want to add cargo so, this first thing we're going to do is stretch it out and put a whole bunch of bracers and whatnot in between so we can slap cargo holds on top of those bracers. So, um, let's just take this grab drive out. Actually, got a better idea. Put this back here like that. Let's take this out and double click this to select all that, move that back. Okay, you want to stretch out the ship. Could add a bracer here, but I want to kind of keep with the theme of uh, the Nova Galactic. So let's just add, um, it's actually cheaper too, a Nova Galactic storeroom. 
okay add one of those is cheaper than a bracer and then um we need five attach points on either side so let's just add another one of these this is cheaper than bracers and that should do it no wait one more see if this makes the ship too long check nope the ship is not too long there we go and now let's start adding the big money over to cargo there we go down to the very best cargo we can buy the galleon s204 cargo hold as you can see it holds a whopping 1480 cargo each we're gonna add 10 of these suckers all right And let's just duplicate it. And you know what? Let's just take this out. We don't need this. Slap this on like that. Put this here. And now we can delete this bracer and duplicate this like that. There we go. Perfect. We do the same thing on the other side. Duplicate that. Slap that over there. And then five more cargo holds on this side. So duplicate. Delete that. Duplicate that. And there we go. As you can see, it has 15,000 cargo. And we have the payload skill maxed out. So that will increase it to 22,500 cargo space. A whopping 20k cargo. All right, so let's do a flight check, and it's going to complain that we have too few landing gears. So all we have to do is just spin around to the bottom. This is the easiest way to add landing gear. And I'm just going to duplicate these until the game is satisfied. Okay, so duplicate that, put it there. Duplicate that, put it there. Flight check. Nope, still wants more landing gear. Duplicate that, put it there. Flight check. Nope, still wants more landing gear. Duplicate that, put it there. Flight check, and we're good. That's it. There's our cargo ship. Now, um... I want to add a, you know, I want to spend here total cost eighty eight thousand seven hundred and seven credits and tons of cargo, and I just want to add a couple things just to make it look a little sleek. It's only add like a you know about five hundred to the um, the cost. And that would be these right here, and they were part of the original ship, so. Duplicate that, put one there, and duplicate that, and put one there. There we go. That's my cargo ship. Let's paint it. Choose this color here. For all three. Accept. And rename it. And I'm going to call it the SSOS. Golden Boy, because his job is to strictly make money and XP. Well, to make money, really, because you know we've already made the XP. Here you go, the SS Golden Boy. Slack Squadron of Outrageous Starships, and we're good to go. All in, just a little under ninety thousand credits. Okay, it's not like a half a million credits. It's not like a million credits. It's not like two million credits. It's just less than a hundred thousand for a huge quality of life improvement. Out we go. Accept. I'm sure you can find something you like. That was Mr. Fumble Fingers. Here it is. Hey, golden boy. Let's take you on your virgin run. Back to bezel 3B. Okay, and like I said, that was way, way easier than 
setting up an amp farm. That's what I was doing. I was trying. I was starting to set up the amp farm, and I'm going, no, no, that there's an easier solution. It's more expensive, mind you, but um, you know, at this point, what's money? Okay, so now, with your golden boy set up, just as normal, you only have to wait four hours to recharge all your aluminum, nickel, cobalt, and iron, and then start cranking out the adaptive frames and um, iso-centered magnets. And all you have to do is just simply watch your character's mass level. As soon as it reaches 20,000, send it over to the ship by accessing Golden Boy hit cargo hold, go to resources and hit um, go to your own inventory, go to resources and hit store all resources. That will offload your humongous 20,000 kilos of adaptive frames and isocentered magnets onto your ship. Okay? And tell you what, that's what I'm going to do now off camera. I'm going to crank out a whole bunch of isocentered magnets and adaptive frames just for demonstrational purposes, I'll be right back. And there we go. We hit the 20,000 K mark, 20,000 mass. Here we go. And um, I hustled up three skill points and it took about seven minutes, which is pretty damn good for being at level 60. So things slow down, but still uh, three skill points, seven minutes, level 60, pretty damn good. And like I said, I got, I'm grossly overloaded, take three steps and you know <laughs> this is what i'm talking about see already grossly overloaded all our health is down or almost all down you just take a few more steps and health is decreasing and this is what you want to avoid this is what you want to avoid so all you have to do is just simply access your ship menu go to cargo hold go to your inventory go down to resources and simply store all resources there you go. Now you're down to a normal amount. And it's all on the cargo. It's all in your cargo hold. There. Anyway, I him do all the work. Now you can go to market. Let me just restore my health by sleeping an hour. There you go. Now, don't even have to leave the hat. Just fast travel. To market. For example, Volai. Neon Core. Are you working toward that? There you go. No more running around with a fuzzy red screen, half dead. And just start selling off. Something. You got the money. Okay. Switch over to vendor sell, then switch over to sell from your ship. Go down to resources. Sell as much as you want. And let's just run through all the vendors here. You can sell some to Seaguard's outfitters. Don't joining the Merchants Alliance. Sure, I have. Once again, sell from your ship down to resources. Next. This is great. No more fuzzy red screen, no more being half dead. You can go next door to the Emporium. They only have 3,500, but might as well. What's up? Thank you for taking care of that. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sell from ship, resources, adaptive frames. Please visit us again if you're in the market for next. The mining leak. Hey 
I'm calm here to purchase some mine. Certainly, my friend. Self arm ship. Farewell, my friend. And tell everyone we have plenty of mine. We will. Next. Newell's goods. You should have seen the look on deck. Of course. And he's got 5,000 isocentered magnets. Thanks for stopping by our shop. And... The guy down here has 1,500 credits. I think Hello. she buys uh... I hope you're having a nice day. Welcome to Tranquility. I'm Delilah. Is this your first time? Are you working? It's a pretty impressive tech like that. She's going to go through a dialogue. Feel free to stop by. For... And let's see what Feeling you have for sale. Like nice... Bye. Yep. Yeah. Oddly enough, she buys resources. So, she's got 2400. And somebody gave me a tip about another Have guy. A relaxing day. Here. Three. Making a lot of her money back right away. Here. Let's see if this is bullshit. Hey, thanks for stopping. Somebody said this guy buys uh, resources Likewise. too, and he's got forty-five hundred. Any help? What brings you to Ryujin Town? I'm shopping. Well, then you're in though. You should stop by the Tranquility Shop, of course. Like to see what you're selling. Absolutely. Okay, he's got five thousand at his disposal, and he does not buy resources. Bullshit. Complete bullshit. Whoever told me that, bullshit. He doesn't buy resources. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so I believe that is it. But still, that's a lot of vendors. That's a, you just offloaded a lot of goods. Um, another thing you could do. See, now that we're like, you know, we're no longer encumbered by, you know, normally, if we still have all these, we'd still be grossly overloaded. So you'd have no option except to simply wait here at Neon Core. Wait. Uh, sometimes you'd have to wait two cycles two cycles of 24 hours to get all the vendors to respawn. Instead, um, let's just explore a couple of other options here. You could go to Alpha Centauri. Jemison. And go to the Mast District. If you don't like running around, this is another way of sailing off that I've recently discovered. Once you're at the master districts, turn around, do a 180, go down the ramp, cut to the left, and go into the elevator. Take the the service elevator down to the well. Just take it down. There's no other option. Go past the med bay. Find the exit sign there. Go straight through here. We're going to take the first right. And there's the Trade Authority. And they've got 11,000 at their disposal. Plus, you can sit in her chair if she's available. If it's available. It's cliche, but it's true. Everything has a price. Of course, of course. Okay, she's got 11,000. And sell from ship, resources down to us, standard magnets. 
and she can buy it all. There you go. So that's like... That's like 40,000 credits at your disposal. To find us. One thing you can do with her is if she's not sitting in her chair, she's, she's sitting in her chair, let's just see if we can get her out of her chair. Just by waiting an hour. That didn't do it. I'm not sure what would well, do it. Oh, she gets up. See, this is what you want. No this is the ideal situation. No you want to grab her chair. Then you can wait. And here, all you have to do is just wait one cycle of 24 hours um, to get everything, all the vendors' um, money to respawn. Let me just demonstrate this. And then, you know, you have to get out of the chair. Just turn. And... If she's in the right position, you can access her. If there's something you need, no matter what it is, be my guest. Okay, so she has no money, right? Pleasure dealing with you. As we discovered before, all you have to do is wait um, past midnight UT twice. And here you can do it by simply waiting 24 hours because it's 24 hours equals. 50 hours UT. So that'll do it every single time. You just have to wait 24 hours. It takes 45 seconds real time. Thing about the trade business? There you go. Who you know? Not if Access there's something her. you need, no matter you won't find a better selection of There you go. Inventory respond. Then you can sell off whatever you like. And we're sold out. Don't even have to get up from the chair. The trade authority appreciates Wait your visit. again. 24 hours and her inventory will respawn again. So this is a great way to sell off. Basically it's 11,000 per minute selling off using this method. As long as you can get her chair there. You only have to get out of the chair and run around. Another one um, that I've recently discovered is right back at um, New Homestead and this is why I had you get a bed right next to your um, here in Titan this is why I had you get that Nova Galactic all-in-one berth 2 by one B okay not a B because that'll place a bed right as soon as you go in. So here you could use the Trade Authority kiosk. They've got 5,000. Sell off what you like from your ship. Let me just sell something, for example, just like for demonstrational purposes. Like, for example, all this crap all here. Okay, so we see he has less than... 5,000 just for demonstrational purposes. I didn't sell everything. Then you can go back to your ship and sleep three hours. That's all it'll take here on Titan. And your bed is right there. That's why I had to get the Nova Galactic all in, all in one, two by one B. That puts the bed right there. Wait three hours. respond again see so that's another way of selling off you can either run around neon core you can go to the trade authority at Jemison and sit in your chair or you can come here this is I don't know it depends on you know how you like selling off I don't mind running around it's kind of like you know kind of breaks up the monotony of selling off Okay, so once again, just for demonstration of purposes. This is probably the fastest, I would say. But they only have 5,000. And only 3 hours, that's all it takes. As you can see, it's 47 hours, 45 minutes, just short 
of 48 hours UT. But they gave it to you anyways for some reason. There we go, 5,000. Who loves it? Slack loves us. That's right. Don't you forget it. So there you go. Here's some hassle-free bezel 3B XP farming and selling off. And lots of different methods of selling off. And you can run all over the place with your 20,000 K kilo of cargo. Run all over the universe. Run all over the, the galaxy. Selling off wherever you like. Right? So that's it for this video. My name is Major Slack and I definitely approve this video. If you do too, please give the old Slacks your big old thumbs up, post a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. All right, so you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to continue. Um, we last left off. We needed one more point for scanning, so let's get scanning rank 4. And I'm going to hustle up two more skill points here, okay, using the Bezel 3B outpost and my new... SSOS Golden Boy. All right, so you can do that too if you want to follow the walkthrough and you got everything you need to do that. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.